So understanding fragmentation in MTU with next top resolution protocol, uh, MGRE, and IPSAC. We'll go back to that same example where we've got a hub site and we've got a spoke site. Our traditional MTU is going to be 1500. But what's going to happen as traffic comes into our routers is that we're going to add a couple layers of encapsulation and then we're going to send that traffic across the internet. Some of the layers that we have to account for are going to be the GRE header. And then once we get that GRE header, remember that GRE does not have any type of encryption. So we're also going to net add an ESP header to that. So this is going to give us a good degree of overhead that we didn't previously have to deal with. What most people will do to adjust this is they'll come in here, they'll go to their tunnel interface, and they'll adjust the MT on the tunnel interface. And you'll do this on the hub as well. The key thing to this, and I want you to think for a second, when we talk about adjusting the MTU, it's great because it's going to help us avoid fragmentation um, because of the additional overhead. But when I adjust the MTU, could that affect my routing protocols? Think about that for a minute. Remember we said, when you look at your environment, and you're, you know, we're using these MGRE interfaces, and with DMVPN, if you don't need shortcut switching, if you don't need spoke-to-spoke -spoke dial up, what you can do is set GRE interfaces at the edge and an MGRE interface on the hub. But there's some things to think about when it comes down to your routing protocols. Some of the things you want to think about, let's say that we're running OSPF. OSPF has some requirements, right? If I'm going to become neighbors between these two sites, we need to agree on the area ID, right? We need to agree on the authentication type. We need to agree on the authentication key. I'll just put ATH key. We need to agree on a lot of things. Your hello and dead interval, that's a big one. Depending on the type of interface that you configure, point to point versus multipoint, one side could be sending hellos at 10 seconds, the other side could be sending hellos at 30 seconds. This could cause your adjacency to fail to come up. So we want to make sure that we keep an eye on our uh, hello intervals on the different types of interfaces. If everything's MGRE, that's going to be okay. Uh, another thing you want to keep track of, let's see, area ID, authentication type, authentication key, hello and dead interval. What else am I missing? There's more. You know your subnet mask has to match? It should anyhow, but if your subnet mask doesn't match, you won't form an OSPF adjacency. Another one that's pretty tricky is your MTU. Of course, you've got the network type and area type. So point to point versus broadcast versus non-broadcast multi-access. Uh, the MTU is another one with DMVPN that could get us into trouble. If you lower it on one side and you forget to lower it on the other or you set it to two different values, your routing protocol, in this case OSPF, won't form an adjacency because that MTU has to match. Just some things to kind of keep in mind when you're implementing DMV.